Hey guys, there's not a whole lot going on in Brave Exodus this week, so I haven't really done many videos. Um, but I've gotten a few requests to update my Intangir and Antonola Clear videos because uh, most of my original videos were made uh, during like the first week when, um, if you remember, the barrage abilities like from Rosa and Mastermind Zon used to do more, so they were changed in a future patch in those videos. You can't really follow them turn by turn anymore because Barrage and, you know, like Rosa's uh, Arrow Storm or whatever it's called, they break the gauge less so the videos weren't really, like, current. So we're going to do an updated video. Now, these, these are older trials, so they're not really super challenging. But if you don't if you don't go in there prepared, they can, get, they can give you a little bit of a problem. So we're going to start with um, Intanger. Uh, we're going to go to Hard Mode. The missions are No Items, Evoke an Esper, 20 turns or less. <laughs> Um, we're not going to bring a friend. We're only going to use a four-man team as well. This is just the absolute basics that you need for the fight. Because, you know, with power creep and all, um, Luna Freya just destroys this fight. So this is all we really need. But we're leaving two slots empty. Uh, if you don't have your own Luna Freya, obviously grab a friend Luna Freya. Um, fill the slots with whatever you want. More, more finishers, more chainers, whatever. But Luna Freya, on her own will one-shot this fight even without breaking the gauge. We're not even going to break the gauge because we don't need to. And there, there's, there's a few um, uh, requirements for this fight. First of all, the boss is going to ambush with uh, a meteor attack as well as an AoE sleep. So you want your team to be immune to sleep or bring a way to cure sleep on the first turn. You also want um, either something like guts, you know, chance to survive fatal damage, or just enough bulk to survive it. Uh, now for the Esper mission, Luna Freya will fill the Esper gauge to full automatically on turn one. But if she's asleep, I think that doesn't go off. And she's not naturally sleep immune. So if you're relying on the friend Luna Freya to fill the Esper gauge, you kind of want to grab one that's sleep immune in the base form. And if they're not, um, bring, bring your own way to fill the Esper gauge on turn one without hitting the boss. So you also want... Um, Units that don't counterattack, preferably. I've never actually confirmed exactly how counterattacks on Intangia works. I just avoid them when possible, and it's just, you know better that way. But some some counterattacks like won't wake them up. Some will. I don't I don't really know entirely how it works. But the first thing we're gonna need is a unit with perfect dispel because we're gonna be um, killing the boss on turn two, and we got a perfect dispel without removing the imperils. So we're going to be using um, Heavenly Technician Lid. You can use anyone with a perfect dispel you want. So Heavenly Technician Lid, um, Healing Avatar Lid, uh, Neo Visions Lauren. There's there's a ton of units that can do it. Um, Secret Freedom Vaughn. Any of these are fine. And put them on an Esper that does not deal damage. So we're bringing her on Lakshmi. Um, so she's got you know Decent Spirit and... Uh, ribbon for a status immunity, so she's gonna she's gonna stay awake during the ambush as well as survive it. Um, then Luna Freya. This is this is like my Luna Freya. You would grab a friend, and the mine is really well geared. And if you're not like really well geared, the Luna Freya will not by herself solo OTK it. So if your Luna Freya is um, you know lower end or lesser geared, uh, bring you know these these two empty party slots. Bring an extra finisher. You know, bring Ferris. Bring um, uh, bring Terra, bring whatever you want, but you know if your Luna Freya, yours or your friend is not like really well geared, you're gonna need a little bit of bonus damage to do it this way. So base form is not super important, just status immunity, some decent spirit. Shift form is, um, like I said, mine is really well geared, so this is like um, I think potentially even best in slot. I think it actually is. Now I'm missing a Ravenheart. It's close enough. It's gonna it's gonna overkill by enough all by herself. And again, if yours is not as well geared, bring extra DPS. And then Chainers, um, just Sakura. Now we gave her Guts, uh, just so she survives the ambush. We gave her a status immunity. And she's dual wielding on a Flood Esper, and so is Nicole. Now you can obviously replace these with literally anyone you want. Um, I'm bringing Sakura and Nicole because I can. And let's get in here and do it. You know, bring two actual Chainers if, uh, if you're... Luna Freya friend or yours is not quite as strong. So here's the ambush. Our store units are going to guts. The other two are going to survive it through um, through their spirit. So there we go. So turn one, we don't want to hit the boss. So we're just going to use Luna Freya to shift and get herself ready. So we're going to do Gentiana, Water Blessing, 
and pure erosion. Make sure you don't use anything that deals damage to the boss. All right, we're going to summon Locksmith for the Esper mission, and the other two are going to just guard. Now, the boss will go to sleep and not attack your team. You don't attack him, he won't attack you. That only worked for the first turn, by the way. You know, After the first turn, you've got to kill him or do the fight properly, but we're fine. So we're going to use Jamming Pulse to perfect the spell of the boss. That's going to remove the spirit buff, but keep the imperil intact. And now we're going to just chain with our Flood Espers and cap of Luna Freya. So Flood's a little bit slow, so we're going to send a Flood first, we're going to wait, and then we're going to Luna Freya. And there we go, we did 1.6 billion. Um, the boss has 900 million HP, so we overkilled by like 60%, 70%, something like that. Yeah, we overkilled by a tremendous amount, so you, you, you might not even need... So maybe even like a non-best-in-slot EX1 Luna Freya should be enough. I don't know. Um, overall, we did a ton of damage, which is all that really matters, and we did all missions. We did no items, we did um, 20 turns or less, and we summoned an Esper. So let's go ahead and get into the Antonola trial. I'll see you in a moment. Alright guys, next up we're going to be going to Antonola Extreme. Um, this time we're going to be going for a slightly slower clear. We're not really going for like the turn 1, turn 2 OTK. Uh, those teams can be built, but they're a little bit trickier to build than like a slower clear and for anyone struggling with the fight I'd rather do the you know the easier way to do it as opposed to the flashy way to do it um, So we're gonna go with five units. Uh, you absolutely should bring a sixth unit There's no reason to bring five so if you need more DPS on um, which you, you should um, You know add, add a friend or if you don't have these units, you know bring a friend and bring your own unit to deal extra damage finisher and more buffs whatever you need uh, the missions are no items, evoke an Esper, and 20 turns or less. So this time we are going to be breaking the gauge. The boss is weak to um, katanas, rods, and whips. We're going to use Gilgamesh to do a katana break. Um, one dedicated dedicated gauge breaker is all you really need. Uh, if you've got more, by all means, bring it. It'll speed it up even further. Uh, but we're going to be using this team. Um, we're going to be covering the magic. There is fire and earth magic. So we're going to use Beatrix. Um, base form, just Miracle Shoes, just for the sake of it. She doesn't even need it, but, you know, whatever. Um, shift form, we're going to get 200% to Fire and Earth to cover the magic. Um, there we go, just, you know, generic build. And the whole team wants status immunity, so I'm giving her um, the virtual training card. If you don't have that, you know, just give her a ribbon or something. But the whole team wants status immunity, either from a buff, or, in my opinion, it's easier to do it from gear. Um, Gilgamesh, base form, just some Esper fill for the mission. Uh, shift form, double katana, status immunity, and there we go, just some Esper fill. He's going to be breaking the gauge and breaking stats and in paralane. Um, Kenny Crow, passive provoke evader, he is very easy at that. A little bit of Esper fill, the Malbro shield for status immunity, and he's going to just stand there and look dumb. Um, we're going to be using some mages to do the fight. Uh, preferably you want ice or fire mages if possible. Um, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use fire mages, so I'm gonna use Dark Fina and Saul. Now this one is geared very 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 well, STMRs and all that. So this would be like the friend unit you bring. It's just you know a mage to deal lots of fire or ice damage. We're gonna go with fire with this team. And again, I'm gearing this one really well. The rest of the team is cheap gear. This would be the friend slot. So he's got he's gonna carry the fight. So he's got you know max plant killer etc. And then here's the unit I'm bringing. I'm bringing Pure Heart of VV. He's honestly not going to deal a ton of damage. We're not doing his Reflect trick. He's literally going to be just a support chainer with the Irony's Ring and his fire skills. So if you don't have VV, bring you can bring literally a three star with Fyrega and the Irony's Ring, and it would be fine. Um, but VV will speed up a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm gearing the team all by myself, so therefore I ran out of Plant Killer, so he has nothing but a little bit from an Esper. And there we go. And we're bringing No Friend. You know, if you have a friend get built for it, by all means bring it. Or if you have, uh, you can actually bring your own friend six units if you really wanted to. That'd be fine as well. All right, so Beatrix on this turn is going to shift, and she'll just do her cover and all. Because she's got 200% resistance, this she's not even going to take damage. But you know, no reason not to. All right, um, let's see. Gilgamesh is going to shift. I should have started in the shift with him. Whoops. All right, so we're going to triple hero. We're going to do Excalibur. We're going to do Genji Blade. And then we're going to do Peerless Katana. And we're going to target the part A for this. All right, that's going to break the boss, imperil everything, and then start breaking the gauge. Um, Saul is going to, let's see, we're going to do just double Scarlet Heat and two Sage Awakening. 
VV is going to, on this turn, triple. We're going to do double Ferrega and Life's Radiance. Alright, we'll go ahead and do this first. Oh, you know what I should have done? I should have imbued, I should have amplified the party with VV, but you might not be using a VV, so we're actually not going to use his Amplify. But if you're using this exact same party, use VV's Amplify to um, boost your team's fire damage. But I actually don't want to rely on that. Alright, so let's go ahead and summon an Esper to say we did, so Kenny Crow has served his purpose in the fight. Alright, so some attacks. Um, these are these are fire and earth attacks, so they deal no damage to Beatrix. She has 200% resist. If your tank is less resist, they'll take a little bit of damage. Alright, so now we're going to triple cast Katana Break on the, the boss, and that's going to break the gauge entirely. So, Peerless Katana. Okay, perfect. And now we will quadruple fire. And then VV will quadruple fire. Now we didn't kill the leaves last turn, so the boss is still buffed. So he can take, he can take a lot less damage than he would uh, once the leaves and all die. The leaves are probably gonna die this turn. I don't know for sure. Yeah, they did. Okay, so we'll go ahead and use Beatrix to 75% mitigation. Candy Crow will just, you know, guard. We actually don't need mitigation. The only time the boss will ever hit your team is on turn 7. But as you can see, we're definitely going to win before turn 7, so we don't really need mitigation. But um, if you're not, if your team is not won by turn 7, use Beatrix's LB, you know, bef on or before turn 7, so that the mitigation... Well, actually, it only lasts 3 turns, or 4 turns. Anyway, use her, B use her LB on turn 7, and you'll be fine. But, um... I mean, there we go. So VV with basically no killers and just quad casting Irony's Ring. Uh, chained with Assault. That was geared really well, to be fair. And we killed it on turn turn um, what was that, turn 3. Uh, you could also bring a Terra Friend and just some Chainers, and the Terra Friend will cap the boss, and that'll deal probably OTK. Maybe, 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 maybe I should have gone with that. But um, yeah, as you can see, um, VV is not really built for, for being used that way. I probably shouldn't even have used VV because people are going to say, oh, but I don't have VV. VV was not critical for that. You, I could have used a three-star chaining Ferrega from, like, Ifrit or something, or uh, Phoenix, and it would have been fine. But, yeah, so Saul carried that fight. Um, so there it is. You know, pretty pretty simple. Just break the gauge. Um, like, again, um, Katana gauge break is, is really what, what you want to do. Uh, that's, let's see, Gladiolus, Assassin's Shadow, Gilgamesh, who else has Katana Break? Uh, New Vision's Axstar. Um, and then Rod Break, you can use Kunshira or Save Your Lightning, they've got Rod Break in their kit. I don't think anyone has a Whip Break, so that was kind of weird for the developers to put Whip on there, but, yeah. Anyway, so there was an updated clear on Scorn of Antonola and Scorn of Antanger. Um, after the barrage nerf. So just use a proper gauge breaker, which these days are a lot more common. The reason I use like Zahn and all that on the day one clears of these is because these trials came out like at the very start of the Neo Vision era and gauge breakers almost didn't exist. There was like one for each weapon and I didn't, ha I didn't have them at the time so I used like Zahn and all. But anyway, nowadays gauge breaks are very, very common. Everyone's got them, so just grab one and break the gauge. And actually, in, in Tanger, we didn't even break. We didn't even break the gauge. Didn't need to. But for Antonola, katana or rod breakers, and then destroy destroy the plan. See you next time.